Hello, welcome to Knitting Nicely. Today we're going to learn how to cast on for the hem of this gorgeous sweater that is a replica of the sweater that Marilyn Monroe wore on the beach in Santa Monica, California. So this is what the hem looks like and that's what we're going to learn how to cast on for today. So this is a pretty unique cast on. Um, I haven't seen it anywhere in my searching on the web. Um, it's actually my version of sort of a replica of what the original was. The original sweater that M Marilyn Monroe wore was actually knitted with a knitting loom, um, but I figured I would make the pattern work for knitting needles. And so this is my version of the hem for that sweater. So here we go. So this cast on requires some waist yarn and a crochet hook and size 15, US 15 needles, which are 10 millimeters. Um, so let's start with the waist yarn. And I'm not going to do the full cast on number of stitches, but I'll do several so that we can get an idea of how it's done. So first we make a slip knot, we'll put that on our crochet hook. And then we make some chains and I'm going to just make 10 chains, but you need to follow the pattern for whichever size you like. So this is one, two, Making this chain just make sure you do it nice and loose because we're going to be inserting our huge needles into these little bumps at the back okay and then when you get to the end of your chain just pull that loop really wide and then you can cut it right here I'm not going to cut mine because I use this waist yarn all the time and, um, I don't want to make it short okay now the next step is Get your needles and for this pattern we need a really big needle for the for the cast on us 15 10 millimeter and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the back of our chain so this is the top of the chain you can see those little v stitches on the top but we're going to look at the back of the chain and find the little bumps that are on the back of the chain and we're going to put our knitting needle right through that little bump in the back and we're going to grab our working yarn. This is the yarn we're going to be using for our project. And we're going to just pull that yarn through that loop. Like so. And we're going to do that on each of the little bumps on the back of this chain. So I should end up with 10 stitches on my needle. Two. Find a little bump right there. Some of them might be a little bit small if you got that stitch tight. Make sure when you put it onto your needle that you're letting the stitches get big. You want it to be the size of your needle. Five. Don't hold your yarn too tight. Let it kind of loosely on there. I like to pull this last chain tighter so that it kind of grips onto my working yarn and then I can pull my working yarn a little bit tight so it doesn't slip off the end or get, or get too loose on the end. Okay, here's another one and as you notice I'm pushing the stitches to the thick part of my needle as I put them on so that they stay nice and snug on my needle but not too tight. You should be able to move the stitches back and forth easily. Okay, let's get another one on there. And two more. And the last one. Okay. There we go. There 
there's that step. So here's where the cast on gets a little bit tricky and unusual. <laughs> so what we need to do is we need to move, oh, and I added a few stitches to here to make this part of the demonstration a little easier to show. So what we need to do is move half of these stitches to um, a working needle and half of them are gonna go, I'm sorry, we're gonna put half of the stitches on our working needle, this side of our working needle, and half of them are gonna go on a spare needle. Let me grab my spare needle. So I've got my the other end of my working needle and I've got a spare needle. And I'm just gonna move these one stitch at a time to these two needles. And I'm gonna start with my working needle. I'm just gonna slip it to the working needle. Slip one. And I'm gonna slip the next one to my spare needle. Then I'm gonna slip the next one to my working needle and the next one to my spare needle and just continue on all the way down that ed that cast on. So we're taking it off this side of the working needle and we're gonna put it on half on the working needle and half on the spare needle. The reason for this is because we're gonna end up working this part of the cast on in the round. Back and forth, working needle, spare needle, working needle, spare needle, working needle, and spare needle. Okay. Now you've got half on the working needle, half on the spare needle, and we're ready for the next step. Now we're gonna move these stitches to the other end of the working needle and to the middle of the spare needle. So I'm just gonna pull these stitches so they're in the middle of that needle, so it's just the cable. And then I'm gonna pull these stitches to the other end of my working needle so that I can start working from this side and start working these stitches here. So just moving to the other end of my working needle. Okay, now I've got them set up to work. And make sure that your working yarn is not tangled like mine is. Let me get it untangled here. Okay. So we've got spare needle on these need on these stitches, just resting. We don't need that right now. We've got a working needle here. And we're gonna use our other end of our working needle. To work these stitches. Okay, and this is sort of like a herringbone stitch. So we're going to knit through the back of two stitches together. So knit through the, we put our work, our needle through the back side of two stitches together, knitting through the back loop, and pull up a loop. Now, instead of just dropping these two stitches like you normally would in a knit two together, you're only gonna drop the first one. And you're leaving the second one on your left needle. Then you're gonna go in again through the back of that stitch and the next one. And pull up another loop. Okay, and again, if normally you would drop both of these for a knit two together, but on a herringbone, you only drop the first one and then you knit through the back of that second one again and the next stitch. Okay, and we're going to do this all the way down the entire row. get to the end, I've got two stitches left here, knit through the back of both of those, drop the first one, and then we only have one left, but we're also going to knit through the back of that one. Okay, there we go. 
now we're ready to work these stitches that are on our spare needle. So the way we do that is we're gonna pull this side of our working needle out so that the stitches are in the middle of the cable. And then we're going to turn our work around, slide these stitches to the end of a sp our spare needle, get these little pieces of yarn out of the way. Those are our yarn ends. We'll find our working yarn. And then we're gonna do the same thing that we did on these stitches down here. We're gonna do knit two together through the back loop. Drop the first one, but not the second one. And then knit two through the back loop. Drop the first one, but not the second one. I'm gonna do that all the way down that row. to the end and again two stitches left knit two through the back only drop the first one and there's only one left on your needle knit through the back of that one as well now you can get rid of your spare needle let's put that aside by the way my spare needle is also my working needle for the main part of my work it's a US 11. You can do the same. Okay, so now we're set up as a magic loop. If you're familiar with magic loop, you'll notice that these stitches are all on one needle. Okay, I can even put them both here. And in order to knit through the next round, these are the stitches that we just finished. And I've just pulled these up to the end of my other, the other end of my needle. Now, in order to keep them all on the same needle, but also work in the round, the stitches that we just work, we're gonna pull the needle out, those. And this is the needle that we're gonna use to knit these stitches. So we push these ones to the end, and we're gonna work our second round of our herringbone. Now this round of the herringbone is a little different. Make sure my tail is out of the way. This time we're gonna knit one through the front, as you see. But we're not gonna let the stitch that we normally let off, the left needle off. We're just gonna leave it on. Then we're gonna knit two through the front, through the next stitch and the stitch that we left on. And then we're gonna slip off the first one, but not the second one. And we're gonna knit two together through the next stitch and the one that we left on. And make sure when you're doing this uh, cast on, this herringbone, that you're leaving your stitches pretty loose because it does tighten. This, the nature of herringbone is that it will tighten. But, oops, I slipped them both off, so I need to get that back on there. Two together, drop one, but not the second one. Knit two together, drop one. And do that all the way down your row. Sometimes I accidentally drop it and then just pick it back up. Okay, all the way down. And then when you get to the end, You just knit those last two together. That's it. Okay, so now we need to do the other side. So we haven't worked this side in the second row. So the way we do that with Magic Loop is we pull the stitches out and around. But make sure that they don't, make sure this little loop doesn't close. 
you want to pull on that loop to get to the other end of your needle. Just peel that away. Because okay. these are the stitches that we just worked. These are the stitches we just worked. So this is the needle that we're going to use to work the next stitches. So let's turn our work around and work the next row. These stitches can get a little bit tight. Like I said, you gotta make sure that they're loose because it'll tighten up on you. <laughs> okay, so on this round, we're doing knit one first. Don't drop the stitch off the left needle because we're going to knit two together. So the next stitch and the stitch we didn't drop off. Two. Drop one, but not the second one. Knit two together. First, but not the second. And we're going to do that all the way down the row. to the end. Remember that we are only going to knit two together and drop both. Okay, now we're ready for the next round. The next round is the same as our first round. So let's set up our needles. Let's This time let's pull this one all the way to the end. There we go. My cable's being a little bit difficult today. So pull this one all the way to the end, and then we can pull. These ones are the ones we just finished working. So this is the needle that we're going to work with next. And this round is the same as our first round. So we're gonna knit two through the back loop. through the back loop leave the first one or leave let the first one off the end and leave the second one on and then continue on down the row remember to keep those stitches as loose as possible end. We're going to knit through that last, knit through the back of that last one. Okay, and time to knit the second part of our round. Pull that cable all the way through. Get the end out of the way. Push those stitches to the end of that needle. These are the ones that we just finished working. So this is the needle that we're going to use for our next row. Okay, I'll get our working yarn ready. As you can see, um, I'm kind of folding my work in half so that my first stitch on the next row isn't really loose. This is right next to where I'm gonna be knitting. That's a little trick. All right, so knit through the back. And bloop. Let the first one off, but not the second one. And do that all the way down the row.
the back loop of that last stitch. Okay, that's the end of that step. And you can see the zigzag pattern going pretty well there. And now it's time to get everything back onto our, um, our needle that we'll be using for our main body. And for me, it's gonna be these US 11s. And the way we do that is we're going to move all the stitches so that the work is folded in half and all the stitches are on the ends of our needle. Half on one side, half on the other. That part got a little bit tight. Okay. Okay, and kind of make sure that your tails are out of the way. We're gonna be removing this blue waist yarn very soon. Okay, All right, so now my US 11 is my working needle and I'm gonna be slipping all of these stitches onto this one needle so that the rest of our, uh, all, the rest of our piece will be worked in rows back and forth. So I'm gonna slip from the front needle, I'm gonna slip one stitch onto my working needle. And then I'm gonna slip one stitch from the back onto my working needle. These are all pearl-wise slips. And then I go back to the front. So slip one from the front needle, slip one from the back needle. Front. why I ended up with one extra there. I must have forgotten to stitch on the other side. Okay. So now we have all of our stitches on one needle and we're ready to start the main body of our work. And you can see this Oh, and now is the time that we can remove our waste yarn. So the way I move my, remove my waste yarn is I take the end, and as you can see, I let it go through the middle, which is not good. Try not to do that. <laughs> I think it's because I didn't cut the end. But the way we do that is we just release the chain. To use the tip of my needle to help with that too. Release those fibers that get tangled a little bit. There's a little fiber there that's tangled. And your waist yarn is free. And you can see that it has a nice little loopy edge to it that looks the same on the front as it does on the back. Cast on is done. Congratulations! <laughs>